If there's one feature that nearly everyone uses on their smartphone, it's the camera. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneZog.com, and this afternoon I had the honor of interviewing Chase Jarvis, who's widely known as the grandfather of mobile photography. Let's take a look at the interview and see what he says about some of the challenges when it comes to shooting with this little camera. So guys, it's an exciting day today. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com and I've got Chase Jarvis on the line with me right now. Now Chase is the grandfather of mobile photography, but as you can tell by the video, he doesn't look like a grandfather. He looks I don't like... I know, man. I feel it. As, <laughs> as I said, you know, with, with all the travel we do, I know it's easy to feel like a grandfather, but uh, you know, bags under the eyes as we talked about pre-interview and kind of, you know, takes you a while to get used to. I uh, get your get your land legs back, I should say, after being on a plane or you know, traveling around, but but it's great to have you on, and you uh, work with, or you have your application, Best Camera, as well, which we'll talk about here in just cool. a second, but I kind of wanted to start out and just see what piqued your interest in mobile photography. So my background is as a professional photographer, it's the only career I've ever had, and uh, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be in a place in my career where I get to travel to places like Iceland, where I just got back from last night, or night before last, uh, feels like last night. That's hence the bags and the eyes. But uh, so we, you know, go to exotic locations with big crews and attempt, you know, shoot primarily advertising and fine art. And for advertising pictures, you know, forty people go to New Zealand for two weeks to get two pictures. And that sort of started feeling like it was undermining the real art and the real creativity part of it. So, and even pre pre iPhone, I was taking pictures with my cell phone. You know, then it was a, like a flip phone or. I don't even remember what it was back then, but and I started actually being really connected to taking pictures more so than ironically in my profession as a photographer because it was about stories and moments in my life and the adage, you know, the best camera is the one that you have with you started to be really prominent in my life and it was seemed much more authentic and connected than all the high-end pro work that I was doing. Well, I can just get this image of you with a Motorola Razor from like 2005, just holding it up. Nailed it. That's what it was. Actually, it was <laughs> post, a post trio <laughs> Razor. Yeah, that was, it was a good phone. It was just yeah, it didn't have that flash, so I know that was an issue. But I mean, how does it you know how does it differ from traditional photography? I mean, mobile photography obviously is, is hugely prevalent with with the way the mobile world is going today. Sure. But how does it differ? I mean, I have you know several photographer friends that carry around all the bags of equipment, and obviously when you have your iPhone, it's just a, it's just a camera with a flash, and they've gotten better over the years. But what is the what is the real difference there? What are some of the challenges you have with mobile versus traditional photography? Sure, I, I'll, I'll go like two things specifically. One, I would say that a big mental difference is this idea that the best camera is the one that's with you, which is a phrase that I helped, you know, I, I pulled it from the history of photography and helped repopularize it. And that's ironically the name of the first book of mobile photography that I did a couple of years ago. Um, it was carried in the Met and the MoMA, like all the gift shops and the Apple stores and whatnot. But it was, like the idea that you always have this camera with you is a big difference than wanting, oh, I wish I had my camera because we were for the, you know, all of time until like five years ago, we missed most of those pictures. And that's what photos are about. They're about stories and moments. And, uh, and if you don't have a camera with you, you can't take those pictures. So the fact that I had this with me was really what helped transform it. So that's a key differentiator, I feel like. And we're starting to see, you know, and look at anyone's Instagram feed or, or Facebook, and you, you're getting these moments where you didn't before. And then the mentality difference is that thinking about this as a camera more than a phone was a click that I feel like our culture that's one of the things that as an artist I wanted our culture to do is to be able to think about that. So I started thinking about this as a camera really, really early. And the key difference between what you have to do with a, a pro camera or a real camera and this camera is this is just requires a little bit of um, – it, it requires a mental shift to think about – the world through a little teeny lens like this as opposed to something that's big and set up and where you draw a lot of attention. And there's a huge benefit to that. I think you get those those stories and moments that you wouldn't otherwise with one button and then click and then share. And it's gone. Well, and I can see you're using the iPhone 5. So I know our audience will want to know what phone you're using as the grandfather of mobile photography. So that's good sure. to know. Rocking, yeah, and, rocking the uh, iPhone 5. Been an iPhone since the since 1.0. I, I got 1.0 within the first hour that it came out on the West Coast, and uh, been there ever since. Been rocking it ever since. So tell me about speak, uh, moving on to the application. Tell me about your best camera app. I mean, how does it help new photographers? And is it available on iOS and Android, or is it just iOS? This, uh, I'll give you a slightly the, the the most abbreviated version I can is that um, it was the first iPhone 
iPhone app that shared photos direct to social networks. So conceived in 2008, doc dropped in 2009, and it was it went to number one in the paid apps. Um, and it was really on the basis of being able to take a picture, add cool effects, and then share it with your friends. So um, that's, I think, why I'm often referred to as the grandfather. Uh, not necessarily the bags under the ice, but really just the, the first person, the first app that came out that, that shared direct social networks. And the way that I perceived photography was what good is an image if it's not shared. And while there were apps out before there to help before then to help take a photograph, this was the first one that allowed you to press one button and send it to all your services, which was a big shift. So it was app of the year and Macworld and the New York Times and, and all that stuff. So it was really more of a kickoff than um, anything that was that's been sustained. So it still has a really active user base. You can still get it. It's iOS only, um, but ahead of its time. And you know, then the Instagrams and the uh, the pads. I watched them sort of come up and um, do an incredible job of uh, executing. I never really wanted to be in the core of Silicon Valley and, and be in that world. Ironically, I have a, a startup now called Creative Live, which is a Silicon Valley based startup. So. I learned a lot of lessons through that process, mm -hmm. but Best Camera was, again, just the first app. You can still buy it. It's $3. I haven't changed anything about it since I put it up in 2009, and some people that freaks them out, other people who are in the core audience, they love it. So. Absolutely. Cool. I've been talking to Chase Jarvis, the grandfather of mobile photography, but by far the best grand, best looking grandfather I've ever met in my life. So can, kudos to you, good sir, on Aaron, maintaining on maintaining that. But thanks so much, guys, for watching. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneZog.com. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.